So by the end of this video, you'll be able to think like an A-star mathematician and really boost those critical thinking skills necessary to get the really good marks at IGCSE. And this comes from a suggestion from yourselves. So Hira wants me to go through some three particular examples that really show the A-star thinking and how you can get ahead from everybody else and make sure that you're the one that gets the A-star and get those really, really good grades. Okay, so let's go through the examples that Hira has mentioned. And rather than just focusing on the answer here, I want you to really get into the mindset of an A-star student. How am I breaking down these three questions successfully? So A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, H, K are triangles with all vertices on the circumference of a circle. So I see this image, I see angles within the circle. So the first thing I'm thinking is, okay, this is a circle theorems question. Now, if you need more practice on circle theorem specifically, check out the video above because I go through that for about 50 minutes. All kinds of questions on circle theorems. Now, from this list, draw a ring around the line that is the diameter of the circle. So that's the next thing I notice. And now I'm going to link these two things together. Circle theorems on one hand and diameter on the other. And I'm going to think to myself, well, what circle theorems do I know that involve a diameter in some way? Well, the first one that comes to mind is when we have a diameter, if we take two lines that come from the circumference, they always meet at 90 degrees. That's why you need to have these circle theorems really to hand so you can draw on them in unfamiliar circumstances. So using this idea here, I'm then thinking to myself, OK, do I have that situation where the angle at the circumference is 90 degrees? Because if that's true, then if I take this angle and this angle, well, let's just call this A and B, for example. Well, these two, in order for this to be a right angle, have to add up to 90 degrees because angles in a triangle add up to 180. So then I look at the three triangles I have here. Do I have two angles that add up to 90 degrees? Well, 94 and 6 don't. They add up to 100. But notice 82 and 8 do add up to 90. So my eyes are instantly drawn to the triangle in the middle, this D, E and F. Well, from that point there, I can then identify that this is our right angle. So this is 90 degrees. And then comparing it to this diagram here, notice the right angle is opposite the diameter. Well, if I do the same here, it's opposite this line here. Therefore, DE must be the diameter of the circle. So rather than focusing, ah, DE is the answer, I move on. Look at how I thought about that. I recognize what kind of question it is, circle theorems. Then I thought about diameter. What do I know about diameter and circle theorems? I drew down the appropriate circle theorem and then kind of worked backwards retrospectively to identify which triangle here is important and then from there identify the diameter. Again, the mark scheme doesn't really help you on this. So going through this video really carefully, thinking like an A-star student is really important. Let's take this next question, which is a very different kind of question, but you can still apply A star level thinking to it. So we have a diagram that shows a square. Actually, that's more important than we think here, A, B, C, D, with side length K centimeters. That means each of these lengths, the entire length across, is going to be K, which I'm going to write in. M, D, E is a sector of a circle where it certainly looks like one, slice of pi. Center D, so this is the center of that circle. E lies on the diagonal of the square. OK, that's good to know. And M is the midpoint of AD. So the first thing that comes to mind here, if this is the midpoint and it's K all the way across, that means this MD here must be equal to K over 2. So that's the first thing I write in here to then consider what's going on. And from this information, somehow, we're supposed to get the percentage of the square that is shaded. So if I want to work out the percentage of something, again, this is coming to my mind when I'm seeing this question. OK, so that is the um, section that we have. So it's the section divided by the total times 100. OK, and this section is quite a vague word, but you'll see as we go through the question, this will come a bit more clear. So I've got these things in mind, how to work out a percentage, 
of a particular shape. Uh, this radius now k over 2. And now I'm going to try and look for any more information. Well, what I would really like to do here is work out the area of MDE. But notice, to work out the area of this, I also need this angle. Now notice the only bit of information I haven't used so far. So I've used this, and I've used the square idea, but I haven't used this. It lies on the diagonal of the square. That's my last key bit of information. Notice that these two angles, because this bisects the angle, these two angles are the same. And if this is 90 degrees, then this needs to be 45 degrees, because these two things are equal. Now I've suddenly got enough information to work this out. So first of all, we're going to find the area of MDE. So to work out the area of a sector, we do the angle, 45, divided by 360, times the area of a circle, a formula you really do need to know, which is pi r squared. So it's going to be pi times, and this is important here, k over 2 all squared, because it's the radius squared. Now, if we simplify this down, well, this will cancel. Again, you can do a lot of this on your calculator here. This calculator question. So 1 over 8 times pi times, now if we square this, we're going to get k squared over 4. And multiply, and we can just bring this all together. And that then gives us pi k squared over 32. So I know that's going to be useful at some point. But again, not entirely sure how I'm going to use that. Now, now I know this area. Notice the area of the square is just going to be k times k, which is k squared. So this is worth writing down. So the area of the square is equal to k squared. That could be a method mark that makes the difference between a and a star. So write these things down. OK, so there's a lot of working on that particular page. Let's just really focus on what we need. So the area of MDE is equal to pi k squared over 32. The area of the square is equal to k squared. And remember the formula that I have here. So it's a really useful technique. Once you've done some working calculation, you don't want to be overwhelmed by everything on the page. Really reduce it down to what you need for the next step. So what we're going to do here is work out the percentage unshaded by using what we have so far. So the section is equal to pi k squared over 32. Now divided by the total, which is k squared times 100. Now one of the benefits of not rushing to that calculator too early is that you can do some nice cancelling. Notice we have a k squared here and a k squared here. Simplifying down to something quite nice to work out on our calculator, which is pi over 32 times 100. So this is where we do need the calculator in order to work that out. OK, so I put this into my calculator, giving me 9.817. However, that is the percentage unshaded, and I want the shaded part. So we need to do 100% minus our answer. Now, most calculators have this option, control answer and that will then get to the final answer there of 90.2 percent let's just write in our working making sure we get all the marks so we have first of all 9.817 dot 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 and therefore percentage shaded is equal to 100 minus 9.817 dot 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 if we work that out remember it's 90.18 so we pop that in 90.18 dot 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 which then gives us 90.2 to three significant figures again you can have a look at the mark scheme just there for the answer what i do want to reflect on here is remember i had a lot of working on this page before but once i've got that key result here which is the area of mde i cleared off the board so i can really focus on what I have. Many AA star students are very capable at mathematics, but if they're overwhelmed by their previous working, they can then get confused with some of the numbers. So if you can put in a box or simplify down, what do I need for the next part? That will keep your mind clearer as you go through these more difficult questions. 
Now, on to our last example here, so question 25. If you're liking this content so far, it's been really useful for you, then please do subscribe because plenty of IGCSE videos are coming out in the months and years to come, and you want to be notified as soon as they come out. Now, I look at this question, and the first thing that I notice before anything is that this is an equation. Now, that might seem a very basic thing to label, but it's worth pointing out because any equation, the strategy is to get m on its own. So have it on either the left-hand side of the equation or the right-hand side of the equation. Now, the way I'm going to do that is actually fairly straightforward, but you just need to be aware of that fact before. So the, probably the easiest thing to do here is the m to the power of minus 1, well, can I multiply it by something so it disappears or goes to 1. So what I'm going to do on both sides here, I'm going to multiply by m to the power of 1. Now I'm writing that 1 very clearly so you can see what's going to happen in our next stage of working. Well, if I do m to the power of minus 1 times m to the power of 1, well remember our index laws, we add the indices, giving us m to the power of 0, and that's equal to 1. So by doing this process, they're inverse operations, they cancel, removing one of the m's, which is really, really helpful, but I just have to remember to do the same thing to both sides. So m to the power of minus a quarter times m to the power of one. Now, if you ever get stuck on questions like this, you can always write it out in long form. Well, this is the same as m to the power of minus a quarter plus one, which is the same as four over four. And minus a quarter plus four quarters, that gives you three quarters of pizza. Always thinking in terms of pizza, be amazed how many times that works. So if we actually do this process, we then get to m to the power of three quarters is equal to 27. And at this point, we need to break this down so we can actually get the m on its own. Well, again, this is also a looks tricky on the surface, but again, I'm going to use a nice trick from before. So what I'm going to do at this particular point is actually I'm going to raise both sides to the power of 4 over 3. Again, what's my logic behind actually raising both sides to the power of 4 over 3? Well, again, I'm remembering my power rules. So if I do this calculation, so I'm going to just apply 4 thirds to both sides, so 27 to the power of 4 thirds. Now the point of this is when we're working with brackets, we're multiplying, so we're going to do this calculation here, times 4 over 3. Again, I'm using the reciprocal here because these cancel through, giving me m to the power of 1, which is known as m. So I'm working backwards. What can I multiply 3 quarters by to get just m on its own? It's always that idea. And by multiplying by 4 thirds, you're going to get that cancellation, leaving us with just m. But whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other as well. So now we need to work out 27 to the power of 4 thirds. This is back to those indices laws that you know. If you need more work on this, check out the video above. The way we do this is we do the cube root of 27, and then we find the power of 4. The cube root of 27, so something times something times something is 27. That's 3, and then 3 to the power of 4, well, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, again, you can use your calculator, is equal to 81. So the key thing about this particular question here is, first of all, it's an equation like anything else. Get m on its own, and then if you're not sure about these power laws, these index laws, then do write them out separately on the right-hand side so you can clarify exactly what you want to do to get m on its own. And if it's a case of doing this process over here and just double-checking your index laws, then that's going to be the extra couple of marks that might give you that A star grade. Now, if you want to work through my IGCSE system, so this is a three-month system that if you follow and follow it very carefully and very rigorously, you can get yourself up to that A&A star grad in just three months. If you're interested in that, check out the video in front of you.